If you'd like to increase the security of your SSH connection by adding multi-factor authentication with YubiKey, this video is for you. We'll talk about what multi-factor authentication is, types of authentication factors, how does hardware authentication device works, and also YubiKey setup for resident and non-resident keys. Let's get right into it. Hello, my name is Philip. Let's continue with our Linux tips for beginners course. When you attempt to log into a remote system, the server needs to verify your identity first. The particular process of verifying your identity to get to a remote system is called authentication. Individual pieces of information used to identify the user are called authentication factors, like for example, password. There are three main categories of authentication factors. Something you know, like for example, password or answer to a question. Something you have, like for example, hardware token, authentication device, message sent to your mobile or authentication application. Something you are, like for example, fingerprint, face or voice. In today's world, relying on username and password to authenticate to your SSH server or any other online service for that matter is very risky. Someone can guess or crack your password and will be able to log in. Switching to key-based authentication greatly improves the security, however, it's still a single-factor authentication. By single-factor, I mean relying on single piece of information to log in. In this case, a key. If somebody gets access to your computer, either physically or by some malicious software, he'll be able to log in to a remote server using your key. To prevent unauthorized individuals from gaining access to your server, very common practice is to add a second layer of authentication. Hence the name multi-factor authentication. That is authentication relying on more than one authentication factor more than one piece of information that you can identify the user. Typically, it's a combination of something the user knows, like a password, and something the user has, like a hardware token or authenticator application. In such a case, even if an attacker obtains access to your computer and has your key or password, he still won't be able to log into a remote system as he doesn't have your mobile phone with authentication app installed or hardware token that you have with you. It's important to mix the categories of authentication factors. Having two passwords or two keys does not improve the security as significantly as, for example, a key that is stored on your server and authenticator application that you have with you. In order for the attacker to log in, he would need both have access to your PC and steal your mobile phone. It's much harder to do. If you want to learn more about password and key-based authentication, please look at this video where I explain that in more detail. To recap, authentication is the process of verifying user identity. Authentication factor is a piece of information used to perform authentication, like for example, password or a key. Multi-factor authentication is verifying user identity in more than one way, using more than one authentication factor. There are three categories of authentication factors, knowledge factor, possession factor, inheritance factor. For multi-factor authentication to be secure, you should mix factor categories. Today I will show you two authentication methods from something that you have category, that will greatly improve your SSH security. Something that you have in conjunction with SSH, hmm, let's copy our SSH private key to an USB stick. The key is no longer stored on your PC, so once you leave for a day, you'll take it with you. Great. However, what if somebody has access to your PC and copies the key from the USB stick? Also, this solution does not protect you if your USB stick gets stolen. Finally, it's not that convenient to use. In order to mitigate those risks, a hardware authentication device was invented. This particular one 
is the YubiKey 5C from Yubico. However, there are other similar products on the market. I like this particular one as it supports various protocols, including FIDO2 that we'll be using, has USB-C and NFC communication, has no battery and is waterproof. Okay, let's get back to the topic as this is not a product review. Before we go any further, let me tell you about asymmetrical encryption used during key authentication. In asymmetric encryption, there are two keys that form a key pair. One is called the public key and the other is called the private key. You can encrypt data with the public key and only the private key can decrypt it. It also works the other way around. Data encrypted with private key can be only decrypted with public key. Important thing is, private key cannot be derived from the public key. This process is used during regular SSH key-based authentication. Server encrypts a piece of information called a challenge with the client's public key, sends it over and only the client with the corresponding private key can decrypt it. This is how the server knows the identity of the client as only the owner of the private key can decrypt the challenge. Now, back to the hardware authenticator. There are two types of FIDO2 credentials, discoverable, also called resident, and non-discoverable. Let's start with discoverable resident credentials. Hardware Authenticator is capable of generating and storing SSH keys. Unlike our USB stick example, the private key generated by Hardware Authenticator never leaves the device. It also, it's also not possible to extract it. Obviously, the hardware authenticator is also capable of decrypting the challenge. So, once we provide the public key to the remote server, it will encrypt a piece of information with it, send it back to the client that in turn passes it to our YubiKey for decryption. Only YubiKey has the private key to decrypt the challenge. Now you see how smart this solution is. Attackers cannot authenticate if your hardware authenticator is not connected to your PC. Attackers cannot offload the key from the authenticator device. Moreover, even if the authenticator device is connected to your PC, in order to perform the authentication, you need to provide a PIN, but also touch the device to confirm your presence. I'm running Ubuntu 2204. There are certain prerequisites for the resident credentials to work. First of all, you need to be running at least SSH 8.3. We are running 8.9, so we are good. Ubuntu's keyring SSH application is not playing nice with the authenticator device, so it's best to disable it by setting auto start enable to false. I did that already. Next, let's add YubiKey's repository and refresh package information. Let's now add YubiKey Manager. It's the application that you will use to configure our YubiKey. GUI version is also available. Let's check if the manager sees the YubiKey by executing a list command. Now let's check our YubiKey firmware version and enabled services. We'll be using the FIDO2 standard, so if it's not enabled in your key, you can enable it with the config command. Last configuration thing to do is set a pin with the access command. Okay, we are all set. Let's ask YubiKey to generate ED255 resident key with SSH keygen command. SK means security key. Residence means the key will be generated on the device itself. Verify required will ask the user for a pin every time the key is used for authentication. Application parameter is optional. It helps to identify the key. So supported key algorithms are ECDSA and ED25519. For ED25519 algorithm to work, you need to be running YubiKey firmware at least 5.2.3. You'll be prompted for a pin, and also you need to touch the YubiKey to confirm your presence. REST is pretty similar to regular key generation, so you'll be asked for key location and optional passphrase. Let's check if the keys are there in the .ssh folder. Please mind that the ID 25519 file 
where you would usually find your private key, is just a reference to the private key file store on YubiKey. It's useless without the authentication device. Let's check if the key is there on the hardware device with the credentials list command. It will ask you for a PIN. Now let's copy the public key to the remote server. Let's try connecting. As you can see, it will ask you for a PIN, as during key generation we did add the verify required option. Then you need to touch the key to confirm that you are present. OK, we are in. On the server side, you can enforce that the hardware authenticators will ask for a PIN so that keys without a PIN won't be allowed. You can also add touch require option there. Let's do this now by adding verify required to the pubkey out option and let's restart SSH service. It's possible to delete a key from the authenticator device. First, you need to list the keys with credentials list command and then issue a delete command providing the key ID. Resetting the keys clears the configuration along with the pin. There is a reset command to do that. It will ask you to reinsert and touch the key. Just to recap, you need at least SSH 8.3 to support resident keys. You need YubiKey firmware 5.2.3 to support ED255 keys. You need to enable FIDO2 standard and set a pin. During key generation, please set verify required option so pin is enforced. Please also set verify required option on the remote server so it only allows keys with a pin. It's possible to remove keys from YubiKey or reset the key completely. Resident keys are very convenient. You can take your authenticator with you and use it on any device knowing just the pin. SSH k command allows you to download the public key along with a reference to the private key to the new machine. However, if someone steals your key and knows the PIN, he can make an authentication attempt. There is yet another FIDO2 credential type called non-discoverable or non-resident. To explain how it works, every hardware authentication device has a built-in master key that is unique. It was created during the manufacturing process. Now, you can generate an SSH keeper on your PC and the keys will be stored physically on your computer. However, the private key will be encrypted by YubiKey. In this approach, if you don't have the hardware authentication device, you won't be able to use your keys as only the YubiKey can decrypt it. Also, if somebody steals the YubiKey, they still won't be able to authenticate as the keys are on your PC. In order to authenticate, the attacker would need both access to your PC, where the key resides, and also the YubiKey. The solution is more secure, but less convenient. Because if you'd like to authenticate from a different source, you have to copy your private key. In order to generate such a key, you should use SSH keygen command. You can either select ED255 or ECDSA key. For the ED255 algorithm to work, you need to be running YubiKey firmware at least 5.2.3. You'll be asked for the authenticator PIN and you will need to touch the YubiKey to confirm you are present. Next step is to provide the location where the keys should be stored. By default, it's .ssh folder of the user's home directory. You'll also be asked for an optional passphrase to the key. Now, let's confirm the keys are there and copy the public key to the remote system. Upon connection, you'll be asked to touch the key. Just to recap, non-discoverable keys are stored on your PC and not the YubiKey. Non-discoverable keys are encrypted with YubiKey's master key. During the authentication, you need both the YubiKey present and the keys on your PC.